Okay, subtracting polynomials. I'm hoping this is going to be the last part of this. Uh, you can see why we couldn't fit this all into one hour, because it took out to be a, another hour, apparently. So, subtracting polynomials, again, no different than subtracting uh, multi-digit numbers. I think the only thing here is that we don't have to do any borrowing, which I think is really, really nice. So again, we can do things vertically, we can do things horizontally. Um, I don't know that I have a preference on this one personally. Um, I think I'm just used to doing things horizontally. But one thing that we have to be careful when we're subtracting is we have to do a lot of signs, changing of signs. So if we were going to do this vertically, we're going to have 5x plus 6 minus x plus 2. So now we can think about this as subtracting without reading, rewriting anything. And we could go 6 minus 2 is 4, and 5x minus x is 4x. So we could do that. But sometimes it just might be easier to change this subtraction into addition and then change all the signs of that second expression. So to see what that kind of looks like, we would take our 5x plus 6, and then we would add, because we're changing it to addition, negative x minus 2. And now we're going to add 6 plus negative 2 is 4, and 5 plus 5x plus negative x is 4x. So it kind of works out the same. I mean, it definitely works out the same. Um, it's just a matter of how comfortable you are with changing um, subtraction to addition and, and vice versa. So either way is OK. If we do, were to do this horizontally, I think this might make a little bit more sense. If we think about this minus sign as really being a multiplying a negative 1 in there. So then what we're going to do is we'll distribute that negative 1. Like that. So we kind of end up with 5x plus 6, then negative 1 times x becomes negative x. Negative 1 times 2 becomes negative 2. Now we just combine like terms, like we've done before. Group them together, maybe. And we get 4x plus 4. Now, after a while, with some practice and all that pattern recognition that we talk about, it'll be pretty easy that you might not have to think about that negative one. But for starters, it's always a good idea to think about that minus being a multiplication by negative one. To make that even clearer, maybe we might write it as 5x plus 6. And since subtraction is really the same thing as adding the opposite, We'll change this to plus negative 1 times x plus 2. I'm going to let that sink in for a couple of seconds. So we change the subtraction to addition, but we have to add the opposite. So to make the opposite, we multiply it by negative 1 and then we do our distribution. So we'll get 5x plus 6 plus negative x. I'll write it out like that. Plus negative x plus negative 2. And then we know adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting. 5x plus 6. And we're back to where we started. So 
5x minus x is 4x, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So that's how we might subtract horizontally. Not quite as straightforward as adding, but you can make it as straightforward as adding just by changing our subtraction to adding the negative or adding the opposite. Okay, here's a longer one, and it's got multiple variables. So we've got A's and we've got B's. So if we're doing this vertically, we still have to match those like terms together. So vertically, we might say 12A squared plus 3AB minus 4B squared. And then we're going to subtract 8A squared minus AB minus 5B squared. So we can think of this as regular subtraction and just keep that fact that we're subtracting in the back of our minds. But with all these negative signs, I'm not a fan. I will absolutely make a mistake. I promise you. Definitely make a mistake. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually, instead of subtracting these, I'm going to change this to addition and then change the sign of every single thing in the second expression. So let's look at it differently. 12a squared plus 3ab minus 4b squared plus negative 8a squared. Negative of a negative is a plus ab. Negative of a negative is a plus 5b squared. Now adding, we like adding. That becomes b squared. This becomes 4ab. And this becomes 4a squared. And it looks like we're, all of them have come out to be positive. So we end up with 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared, which happens to be a perfect square. Um, which, I, you know, we talk about in a future lesson. But um, it's actually kind of cool that the way this is going to factor out. But we'll look, we'll look at that later. I'm not going to worry about it too much today. Now to do this horizontally, again, I'm going to stress about changing this to positive, uh, adding the opposite. So for adding the opposite, we're going to have 12a squared plus 3ab minus 4b squared. And again, this is where we have to be careful that we don't mess up a sign. Messing up a sign is the most common mistake in algebra in math, in life. No, I'm kidding about that. Um, well, yeah, missing a stop sign, that's a bad thing. But, <laughs> sorry. So, changing this to addition and then multiplying everything by negative 1. So, this becomes a negative 8a squared plus ab plus 5b squared. Sometimes I will actually write them in like this so that I don't forget about what I'm doing. Now, with this being so long, I'm, I am going to rearrange them just so I can group them together. And since we are now officially adding, we can change things around. The order doesn't matter. So, I did it in the order they appear. Sometimes the better way to do it. And we still get 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared. So actually subtracting polynomials is almost easier than subtracting multi-digit uh, whole numbers. Because you don't have to do any borrowing. Okay, so this is a very, very common um, math problem that you see on tests. And what they're saying is to express the perimeter of the triangle as a polynomial. Lots of different words here, big mathematical academic words. Express 
perimeter, polynomial. I think we all know what triangle means. Express, it's the same thing as write. The word perimeter, I know a lot of us get that confused with area. Perimeter is the distance around. It's a measure of length. And we've been pol talking about polynomials this whole time. So we kind of know what those are. So if we want to write the distance around this triangle as a polynomial, we just kind of have to add together the lengths of all the sides. Well, we know what all the lengths of all the sides are, sort of. Or we actually know how they relate to each other. So maybe we would write 3x plus 1 plus 6x plus 2 plus 8x minus 2. If I wanted to, I could put those in parentheses just so we can see where those numbers are coming from and how they are grouped together. But then we'll end up taking the parentheses out. So we're going to, let's see, all the x terms. 3x plus 6x is 9x. 9x plus 8x is 17x. And then our constants. 1 plus 2 minus 2. That just comes to 1. So our perimeter of this triangle is 17x plus 1. Well, that's all well and good, but we don't know what x is, so it's kind of meaningless at this point. But what if someone told us that x is 1? Well, now we're just in the case of what I call plug and play. If x is 1, we put in 1 for the number x. So I'll say our perimeter is 17 times 1 plus 1, which is going to be 18. What if x is 2? Well, we'll substitute 2 for x instead. 17 times 2 is 34 plus 1, so that's 35. So our perimeter is going to change depending on what the value of x is. But finding the perimeter here, not a big deal, just adding sides. So that's all we have for um, adding and subtracting polynomials. I would suggest doing some practice. Um, and we've seen this quote, and I actually talked about it in our live Class Connect, um, Insanity, Story of My Life, uh, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Um, yeah, I do that all the time. I think a lot of us do. But um, just if you're finding that you're doing that, just stop for a second and think it through. And with that, I leave you, and I'll uh, be recording another one for another lesson shortly. Thanks so much.